Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Um, we are back to uh, chapter 9. I'd like to jog your memory with what we did in chapter 8. Uh, chapter 8 talked about Bellingham and the uh, meeting uh, to which Hester went in order to uh, stop people from taking her daughter. So um, we saw the gathering of the major characters in chapter uh, 8 and now we expect uh, more details about some major characters in chapter 9. Chapter 9 is entitled The Leech. The Leech means Yani Al Hashara. Al Hashara li tiltasuk ala jesed al ka'in al hay. Yani, which could um, um, hardly be removed from uh, from that uh, surface, from the surface of an animal, or from the skin of animal, or whatever. So uh, it gives us an idea that uh, this kind of leech is, uh, is living on that skin and it. Um, it could hardly be removed and it is uh, feeding itself on that person's uh, suffering so any animals sometimes suffer when they get some insects uh, stuck on their skins so this gives us a, a detail or um, some information about the character of Chilungwath because the chapter revolves around uh, his character and the leech is supposed to be Chilungwath the physician we needed uh, actually more details about the character of Chilungwath after it has been um, uh, presented again in the previous chapter so now we have more details about uh, his uh, character so the writer starts uh, with giving us an idea about um, him under the appellation the name of Roger Chilungwath the reader will remember um, was hidden another name which is its former we had resolved should uh, never more be uh, spoken so this kind of paragraph gives us more details about the character of uh, of chilling with actually i highlighted the major points in this chapter because i want it to be very brief uh, so that you don't waste uh, too much time um, here um, in pursuance of this resolves he took up his residence in the puritan town you know um, when when he came uh, when he first came uh, by this time Demisdale has already done uh, his sin committing the adultery so his uh, health has started to uh, fail down so they um, asked Chillingworth to treat uh, Demisdale because you know he is uh, well informed and he has um, great experience in um, um, in, in dealing with uh, medical herbs and uh, this um, aspect so he took residence in the puritan town as roger chillingworth without other introduction than the uh, learning and intelligence of which he possessed more than a common measure nobody knows him um, actually only hester knows who that person is only um, so this is um, a kind of repetition because we already mentioned that he has gained a great experience in in dealing with herbs so he uh, has enlarged his own expertise in dealing with uh, medical issues um, the only surgeon was one who combined the occasional exercise of that noble art with the daily and habitual flourish of Reza to such a professional body telling worth was a brilliant acquisition he soon manifested his familiarity with the ponderous and imposing machinery of antique so this uh, highlights his uh, profession as an important physician in the field that's why they have um, asked him to deal with Demisdale and to try to heal him. In his Indian captivity, moreover, he had gained much knowledge of the properties of uh, native herbs and roots, nor did he conceal uh, from his patients that these simple medicines, nature's boon to the untutored savage, had quite as large a share of his own confidence as European, etc. So all these are ideas that highlight his own experience in dealing with medicine. About this period, the health of Demisdale. So we are back to the uh, health of Demisdale. So the writer, he tries to justify why Chillingworth took lodging or um, has um, uh, resided with uh, or lived with um, Demisdale. So now he uh, justifies this idea. His health has evident had evidently begun to fail by those best acquainted with his habits, and the paleness of the young minister's cheek was accounted for by his too earnest devotion to study. So this is what 
uh, Puritans understand why he became so pale, why he is sick, because of his devotion, because he is so much devoted, because he spends too much efforts in dealing with uh, religion and religious activities. So um, he he saved no, he spared no efforts in this field. While we readers understand that this um, kind of state that he suffers from are is uh, only. Uh, attributed to his um, sin, to the sin he committed with uh, Hester. So this is again an idea that uh, Puritans are unable to um, understand why this person gets uh, weak um, and later why Chillingworth gets darker and um, blacker than e earlier. Uh, so uh, more than all to the fasts and vigils الصلوات أو ال religious practices that he does at night in order to keep the grossness of his earthly state from clogging and obscuring so this kind of idea gives us uh, an information about Demisdale why he became so pale why he is so um, sick it is attributed to these reasons according to a Puritan um, um, a Puritan point of view, actually. Such was the young clergyman's condition, so eminent the prospect that his dawning light would be extinguished. The light that he enjoyed earlier is going to be extinguished. All untimely when Chillingworth made his advent to the time uh, to the town when Andama Bahar Hada Ashahs. His first entry on the scene a few people could tell whence a dropping down as it were out of the sky or starting from the neither earth and an aspect of mystery. So when um Chillingworth appears the light of Demisdale started to fade uh, step by step, as if there is a kind of uh, a connection between um between uh, the, the Chillingworth's uh, appearance. He expressed great alarm at the, his pastor's state of health. Chillingworth, he was so concerned about uh, Demisdale's health, but was anxious to attempt the cure. He had a cure and, and wanted to attempt. And if early undertaking seemed not a despondent of a favorable uh, result. Uh, but here we find uh, Demisdale rejecting any kind of uh, medicine uh, from Chillingworth. I need no medicine. But how could the young minister say so when with every successive Sabbath, because the Sab yani Sabbath, Saturday, they have a kind of uh, religious activity, his cheek was paler and thinner. Uh, whenever he does a religious activity, uh, he gets more pale and more uh, sick, as if this gives an idea uh, to uh, uh, the writer hints at the hypocrisy of of Demisdale because he does religious activity, preaching, um, giving sermons, uh, advising people to do um, that and to avoid uh, this, while he himself is a sinner. So this uh, burden is is affecting his own uh, health. So and he kept pressing his hand over his heart as if a kind of um, a treasure that he wants to keep hidden from others, or a secret that he wants to hide from uh, others. Where God's will said Demisdale, when in fulfillment of this pledge he requested Chillingworth's professional advice, I could be well content that my labors and my sorrows and my sins and my pains should shortly end with me, and what is earthly of them be buried in my grave, and the spiritual go with me to my eternal state, rather than that you should put your skill to the proof in my behalf. This highlights his rejection to the interference of uh, Chillingworth. He said that I don't want to reveal anything to you. I want my sorrows, sins, pains um, to be shortly end with me when I die because he would he preferred to die with all these things die with him rather than disclosing them or uh, uncovering them to uh, Chillingworth. And this highlights a kind of a secret that this person wants to hide from uh, others. And we are also assured here that Chillingworth knows what's going on. Uh, replied Chillingworth with this quietness, youthful men not having uh, taken a deep root give up their hold of life so easily. 
and saintly men who walk with God on earth would fain be a way to walk with him on the golden pavements of the new the new Jerusalem. So here he is just like advising him to avoid hypocrisy and be direct and uh, tell about his own sins to be frank with them to with chilling with. Rejoined the minister, no, putting his hand to his heart with a flush of pain flitting over his brow. Were I worthier to walk there, I could be better content to tile here. So, uh, he was strongly moved to look into the character and qualities of the patient. Now, um, Chillingworth is more motivated to understand what's going on with uh, Demisdale for the sake of the minister's health and to enable the leech to gather plants with healing balm in them. They, look, they took long walks on the seashore. So, he tried to be closer to him. So, now they have taken some walks in order to understand um, or to find out what's going on. Uh, with him in order to explore his uh, psyche. So they used to walk together on the seashore, on, on the forest, mingling various walks with a splash and murmur of the ways, um, and so on. Thus, Chalgwith scrutinized, scrutinized any tafahasa, just like in a, a kind of uh, a medical term, his patient carefully, both as he saw him in his ordinary life, keeping an accustomed pathway. In the range of thoughts familiar uh, to him, wherever there is a, a a heart and an intellect, the disease of the physical frame are tinged with the peculiarities of these. This is how Chillingworth thinks. In Arthur Demisdale, thought the imagination were so active and sensibility so intense that the bodily infinity would be likely to have its groundwork there. So he. Chilling with the man of a skull, the kind and friendly physician, strove to go deep into his patient's bosom. Uh, we already know that this person has a kind of um, a power, as uh, Hester has hinted earlier in chapter two, that he could infiltrate into the psyche, into into the heart of person. That's why uh, she uh, held her hand over her heart in order not to be, in order for Chilling with not to discover what she has uh, hidden. Uh, from secrets so he has that ability to uh, infiltrate and penetrate these hearts and uncover any kind of secrets so here the man of the skull the kind and friendly physician strove to go deep into his patient's bosom delving among his principles uh, praying into his recollections and uh, probing it has everything with a cautious touch like a treasure seeker as if he is seeking for a kind of a treasure in a dark uh, cavern and this is what he is gonna do. At some inevitable moment, will the soul of the sufferer be dissolved? This is uh, how uh, the um, Chilingwe thinks. At uh, some kind of moment, the soul of Demisdale, the sufferer, be dissolved. It will dissolve and it flow forth, and it will uh, move forth in a dark but transparent stream, bringing all its mysteries into daylight. This is. I'd like you to remember uh, what he said uh, previously when he said he will be known, he will be known, he will be known. So this is his plan. Now he is following his plan step by step. And he is giving some hints that the, such kind of souls will bring all mysteries into daylight. So there will be no hidden secrets um, uh, in, in Demisdale. Uh, so, Mr. Demisdale effected an uh, arrangement by which the two were lodged in the same house so that every ebb and flow of the minister's lifetime might pass under the eye of his anxious and attached physician. So, now Chillingworth would keep an eye living with Demisdale. He would scrutinize and keep a look on every move Demisdale takes in order to understand and uncover his uh, secret. Uh, on the other side of the house, Chilingworth arranged his study and laboratory, not such a, as a modern man of science would reckon even tolerably complete, but provided with... So uh, now we see Chilingworth's Demisdale's house as two parts. Here lives Demisdale, and then the, on the other side lives uh, Chilingworth under the same uh, roof. The people in the case of which we speak could justify its prejudice against Roger Chillingworth by no fact or argument worthy of serious uh, refutation. 
So here, people started to hint at Chilingueth as a kind of um, a wicked person who practices magic by which he could heal the um, the minister, Demisdil. Two or three individuals hinted that the man of skill during his Indian captivity had enlarged his medical attainments by joining in the incantations, Ta'widat, of the savage priests who were universally acknowledged to be powerful enchanters, often performing seemingly miraculous cures by their skill in the black art. So they understand now Chilingweth as a person who is a physician and a magician at the same time, who uh, mingles, mixes a cures, al ilaj with black art, black magic, al fan al aswad, by which he could produce some kind of um, a powerful uh, treatment. Many of these were persons of such sober sense and practical uh, observation. So now people started to look at Demis Achilangweth from uh, this uh, perspective. Now there was something ugly, evil in his face, which they had not previously noticed. So there's a kind of a balance between these two characters. The character of Demisdale has become so weak, so pale, and so um, uh, thin because of uh, the sin he has committed and his inability to confess. And because of his revenge, Chilingweth has started to be more ugly and more evil in his face, which they had not previously noticed. And which grew still the more obvious to the sight, oftener they looked upon uh, him. According to the vulgar idea, the fire in his laboratory had been brought from the lower regions, as if fire taken from uh, the lower earth, uh, devils. So his visage, al Malte, was getting sooty, with the smoke. To sum up, uh, Hawthorne says, Demisdale, like many other personages of a special sanctity knowledge, was haunted either by Satan himself or Satan's em emissary. So Hnane gives us an idea that uh, Demisdale now is haunted, Maskun, because uh, Chillingweth lives with him, with him. So he is haunted either by Satan, which gives us an idea that uh, Hawthorne compares Chillingweth with Satan, a shaitan, or Mubta'ath min aw ahad al Nuwab mal Satan, one of his uh, assistants. So this chapter details the character of Chilingweth. Now we have more details about the character of Chilingweth. He is getting more evil and we started to hate him. He was brought to town as a heavenly miracle in order to save Reverend Arthur Demisdale, but later he has changed into a, a, a devilish person, how people has interpreted this. Again, Puritans interpret events uh, proves wrong. Puritans are wrong in understanding the character of Demisdale because he is not weak because of the vigils and the fasting and uh, the religious activities because of something else. And Jill Chillingweth also is not that kind of person whom they believed as a, as a kind of a bounty. Barakan is the idea. He is a, a kind of a devil as portrayed by the writer. So Demisdale's character has a moral underpinning that Chillingweth lack or lacks. And Chillingweth has an intellectual freedom and imagination unknown to Demisdale. So each character has something that the other character uh, lacks. This is, uh, oh, these are the main points we need to tackle in chapter 9. I hope to be uh, brief.